Hello friends, welcome to a new lecture on cervical cancer. I'm sorry, the I have may, I have written all this slowly by um, explaining everything, but I have lost the video. So because I cannot write everything again, so I thought I'll just show you this, show this to you, and then based on this, we will I will just explain it to you so that it becomes easier for you to understand. So. Now I would like to discuss about the cervical cancer. So cervical cancer, as I have already written, it is present. It is most common between the age group of 45 to 60 years. If you see carcinoma in situ, that is more common in mid adult age, uh, because uh, once a person, a woman gets carcinoma in situ lesions, so those lesions at least take uh, 10 to 15 years to become a cervical cancer. So once, if you think that the lesions, the, the uh, cervical intraepithelial neoplasia lesions are seen at around uh, some um, 30 to 40 years or 45 years of age, then it, it, if a 35 year old woman, uh, for her it takes 10 more years to get cervical cancer, to suffer from cervical cancer. So the incidence is 45 to 65 years. So mostly an elderly woman or uh, uh, mostly 45 to 65 year old women is more prone for cervical cancer. Now, if you see pathologically, the cervical cancer can be divided into three types. One is exophytic, next endophytic and ulcerative. So if you see exophytic, endophytic or ulcerative, okay, uh, this is one type of classification which I will explain later. And the cervical cancer is again divided into two types. One is epidermal carcinoma. The other one is endocervical carcinoma. We call it epidermal car car carcinoma when the origin of the lesion is from stratified squamous epithelium. If stratified squamous epithelium is the one which is responsible for carcinoma, then that is called a stra epidermal carcinoma. If the mucus of endocervical canal that is important that is responsible for carcinoma then we call it as endocervical carcinoma this endocervical carcinoma will result in adenocarcinoma it is mostly due to the use of oral contraceptives or progesterone pills histologically you can divide them into squamous cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma so this squamous cell carcinoma is mostly epidermal car carcinoma right now squamous cell carcinoma can again be divided into two types one is ectocervical carcinoma or exophytic lesion, which I have uh, told you here, or the other is endocervical carcinoma, or it is called as endophytic lesion, which you hear here. Okay. Now, this ectocervical uh, lesion or exophytic lesion, this is of three types. One, it is a polypoid type. This is polyp. So, it is a polypoid type. Two, it is ulcerative type. Three, which is an infiltrative lesion fat indurated infiltrative lesion okay so there are three types again if you see the endocervical lesion this endocervical lesion it will uh, start here in the endocervical canal and it will infiltrate the surrounding structures and lay initially and later this may protrude out of the cervix maybe has a polyp or maybe um, has a lesion okay has a growth so if you see, this first there is a barrel shaped enlargement of the cervix because the lesion, the infiltration occurs inside the cervix, inside the endocervical canal, so here. So it increases, it leads to the increase in size of the cervix, forming a barrel shaped enlargement of cervix. Whereas here, this cervical one which is present, it will protrude out, okay. So this infiltration, it may protrude out due to the increased growth and this is, uh, the second, this may occur later. Now, what is the clinical features? As I have already written all the clinical features, the, pa the patient can present with irregular menstrual cycles or there can be menometrorrhagia or sometimes the woman can present with co uh, continuous bleeding or even postcoital bleeding or even postmenopausal bleeding. Any woman who is in postmenopausal age presenting with postmenopausal bleeding then always think that cervical can cancer can be one of the cause for it. Then there can be leukorrhea that is white discharge or sometimes blood stained, stained or foul smelling discharge can also be seen. On cervical examination you can see the growth. All this I have already explained in the next lecture but so let us now learn about the staging of cervical cancer. Now
now I think it's complicated I'll just make a video I'll just write this again because it's really complicated if you look at this so one second now let me just draw cervixes so this is that these are the different cervixes which I have drawn so first stage one okay stage one is divided into 1a 1b so first 1a 1a is again divided into 1a1 and 1a2 okay now 1a1 we call it 1a1 if the depth of this lesion is less than 3 millimeters okay and the length of this lesion is less than 7 millimeters okay the extension is less than 7 millimeters and the depth is less than 3 millimeters then we call it as 1a now what is 1a1 what is 1a2 1a2 if the depth is 3 to 5 millimeters and the extension which is there this is more than 7 millimeters that is 1a2 what is 1a2 if the depth is 3 to 5 millimeters and the extension is more than 7 millimeters then it is 1a2 now 1b we call it 1b 1b1 1b2 okay in 1b1 if the lesion which is there that is less than 4 centimeters then that is 1a 1b1 we call it 1b2 if the lesion which is there that is more than 4 centimeters then we call it as 1b2 okay now 2 stage 2 we call it stage 2 if the lesion extends into the upper third of vagina if it extends into upper third of vagina only upper third of vagina then it is called as 1b 1a 2a sorry 2a the lesion is 2a we call the lesion 2b if it extends into the parametrium if it extends into the parametrium then we call the lesion has 2b okay now now lesion 3 in the lesion 3 it is again stage 3 it is again 3a and 3b okay now we call it 3a if the lesion which is there this will extend into the lower third of vagina it extends into the lower third of vagina then that is 3a we call it 3b if it extends into the pelvic wall if it extends into the pelvic wall then we call it 3b then stage 4 if it extends into the distant organs stage 4 stage 4a stage 4a if it extends into the adjacent organs that is stage 4a adjacent organs what are they it can be bladder or it can be rectum any adjacent organ then that is stage 4a then stage 4b is distant metastasis okay so this is about the staging of cervical cancer so the diagram which i have here which i have drawn last time sorry that recording was lost it is similar so stage 1 stage 1a the depth is less than 3 millimeters and extension is less than 7 millimeters stage 1a2 where depth is 3 to 5 millimeters and extension is more than 7 millimeters stage 1b in that stage 1b1 where lesion is less than 4 millimeters stage 1 is less than 4 centimeters stage 1 b2 where lesion is more than 4 centimeters stage 3 in that stage 3a stage 2a sorry in stage 2 in that stage 2a extends into the upper two-third of vagina and stage 2b it extends into the parametrium next stage 3 in that stage 3a it extends into the lower third of vagina stage 3b it extends into the pelvic wall stage 4 it extends uh, 4a it extends into the adjacent organs stage 4b it extends into the distant metastasis so these are the different staging which is ever involved then whatever the investigations investigations first you'll have to take biopsy from this lesion 
in order to stay stage the cast i mean in order to see uh, histologically and then you'll have to do ct and mri this is for detecting the lymph nodes edel enlargement and you'll have to do pt uh, pet scan which is uh, positron emission topography scan and you have to do a chest x-ray and ultrasound this is to uh, diagnose the distant metastasis that is metastasis to lungs or metastasis to ultrasound so this is about the um, carcinoma of cervix and etiology of carcinoma of cervix it is similar to the etiology of uh, a pre uh, cervical intraepithelial neoplasia so thank you guys for watching my lecture